Hello and welcome to Leo's Tech Talk. This video lists the events unfolded in space last week. European Space Agency and NASA-operated Space Telescope has imaged a vast cosmic cloverleaf to uncover its mysterious origins. The cloverleaf is an example of an odd radio circle. These objects are strange bubbles of radio light that are so huge they can be thousands of times the width of the Milky Way, thus encompassing an entire galaxy, sometimes, many. The power needed to create such a structure is immense, leading astronomers to ponder about what events could be violent enough to create one. Ellen Ochoa, a NASA astronaut, who later directed NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, was bestowed with the Presidential Medal of Freedom the highest honor, during a ceremony at the White House on Friday, May 3. Ochoa is the 10th astronaut to receive the medal. NASA astrophysicist, Jane Rigby, shakes hands with President Joe Biden after being presented the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her leadership role in the Webb Space Telescope. After 25 years of drifting undetected in space, an experimental satellite launched in 1974 has been found using tracking data from the U.S. Space Force. The satellite had gone off the grid from radar twice, once in the 1970s and then again in the 1990s. The infrared calibration balloon satellite, S-737, started its journey into the great unknown after launching on April 10, 1974 through the United States Air Force's space test program. While in 800 km orbit, the original plan was for S-737 to inflate and take on the role as a calibration target for remote sensing equipment. After the failure, the satellite faded away into the abyss and joined the graveyard of unwanted space junk until it was rediscovered in April this year. Earth's twin Venus lost its water and became a hellish planet. Venus has 100,000 times less water than the Earth, even though it is basically of the same size and mass, Michael Schaffen, co-team leader and a fellow laboratory for atmospheric and space physics scientist, explained in a statement. To determine how it reached its current state, Kangi, Schaffen and colleagues used computer models of the planet, treating it almost like a gigantic chemistry laboratory. This allowed them to take an enhanced look at the diverse reactions that occur in Venus' swirling atmosphere and identify a suspect for its water loss. The team discovered that a molecule called HCO+, composed of an atom of hydrogen, an atom of carbon and an atom of oxygen high in the atmosphere of Venus, may have been responsible for delivering the last of the planet's water to space but yet the humanity do not have an equipment to conform this claim. A Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on May 6 at 2.14 p.m. EDT and deployed 23 Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit. Meteorologists at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station say there is a 90% chance of acceptable conditions for launch, with a small risk of cumulus cloud development being the only concern. The Falcon 9 first stage tail numbered B-1069, assigned to the Starlink 6-57 mission made its 15th flight. The first stage landed safely on the drone ship just read the instructions about 8.5 minutes into the flight. Parker Solar Probe, captures absolutely incredible video of plasma swirling on the sun. The view, recorded by Solar Orbiter from a distance of a little over 43 million kilometers from the Sun, reveals features on the solar surface that we could have only dreamed about. SpaceX unveiled new EVA suit for first private spacewalk on upcoming Polaris Dawn spaceflight. SpaceX EVA suit looks much like the company's IVA suit, which was designed to be worn within spacecraft during launches and landings, but not in the vacuum of space. The new extravehicular activity suits contain material enhancements and joint improvements aimed at increasing astronauts' mobility while also protecting them from the cold, airless void outside their spacecraft. Boeing's new commercial spacecraft Starliner, called off its first launch attempt on May 6 due to a problem with an oxygen relief valve on the Centaur stage of the Atlas V rocket. Atlas V rocket manufactured by United Launch Alliance, has flown missions since 2002 with a 100% success rate, but this is its first manned mission. The engineering team after evaluation, called off the attempt about two hours before planned liftoff as the vehicle was not in a configuration to fly. The sun's corona revealed during 2024 total solar eclipse a shot by astrophotographer Miguel Claro on 8th May looks mesmerizing. Next-gen satellites will paint a clearer picture of a changing Earth. NOAA's Geostationary Extended Observation Satellite System will focus on providing critical information on environmental issues from the land to the sea and sky. Recently, NOAA shared in a release that scientists determined, for a second time within the last decade, 
that a global coral bleaching event is underway across the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Ocean basins. Sea surface temperature data, gleaned from a blend of NOAA and partner satellites, helped confirm the ongoing event. But while NOAA scientists continue analyzing and documenting the severity and extent of this global event, which is being driven by ocean warming and extreme marine heat stress, there's still more to understand when it comes to the anatomy and ecology of our oceans. A Falcon 9 rocket with 23 Starlink Internet satellites lifted off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on 8 May at 2.42 p.m. EDT, at the very end of a nearly four-hour window. The Falcon 9's first stage booster supporting this mission 656, tail number B-1083 in the SpaceX fleet, launched for a third time came back to Earth as planned about 8.5 minutes later, touching down on the drone ship A shortfall of Gravitas, stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. This marked the 68th booster landing for ASOG and the 305 first stage landing for SpaceX to date. Private lunar lander to carry memory disk of 275 human languages to the moon in 2024. iSpace will send a time capsule of 275 human languages to the moon as part of its lunar mission later this year. iSpace, a Japanese lunar exploration company that's working to put more human presence in space, has teamed up with the United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, to take an important part of our humanity and preserve it on the moon during its upcoming Hakuto or Mission 2, which will send a robotic lander to the lunar surface. China's Chang'e 6 mission to collect samples on the far side of the moon enters lunar orbit. China's most ambitious moon mission yet, Chang'e 6, entered lunar orbit overnight on Tuesday, May 7 setting its sights for a landing on the Moon's far side to collect and return samples to Earth. After a five-day transit to Earth's largest satellite, the probe performed an engine burn beginning at 10.12 p.m. EDT on May 7, slowing its momentum enough to be captured by the Moon's gravity, the China National Space Administration, CNSA, announced in a release. If successful, Chang'e 6 will only be the second probe to land on the far side of the Moon after Chang'e 4. The most active sunspot of Solar Cycle 25, AR3663, has launched yet another X-class solar flare as it approaches the Sun's western limb. Another sunspot cousin AR3664 also unleashed an X-flare and several M-class solar flares. The two most recent solar flares erupted from AR3663 and AR3664 respectively. The first occurred at 9.42 p.m. EDT on May 7 and the second just a few hours later at 1.08 a.m. EDT on May 8. China's latest lunar mission is carrying a secret rover to the moon's far side, new photos reveal. Eagle-eyed observers spotted the mysterious spacecraft strapped to the side of a lander that is scheduled to touch down on the moon next month and the robot's purpose remains unclear. Using the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, Astronomers have discovered a scorching hot lava planet 55 Concrete E, believed to be composed of diamond. This planet is located around 41 light years from the solar system and has a width almost twice that of Earth and a mass around nine times greater. This exoplanet exists a mere 1.4 miles from its sun like star, 55 Concrete A, and orbits its host star once every approximately 17 Earth hours and has a roasting hot surface temperature of around 4,400 degrees Fahrenheit or about 2,400 degrees Celsius. A new research indicates a thick layer of gases surrounds the planet, implying it has grown a second atmosphere after losing the first. NASA's Planet Hunting Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite TESS is back in action, searching for worlds beyond the solar system's limits. TESS came out of safe mode on May 3rd, resuming its search for worlds in other star systems known as extrasolar planets as they cross or transit the face of their parent stars, causing a tiny dip in starlight. The satellite had gone into safe mode when halted operations on April 23rd, just five days after it celebrated the sixth anniversary of its launch on April 18, 2018. A Falcon 9 rocket lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base on Friday, May 10 at 12.30 a.m. EDT with 20 Starlink satellites including 13 with direct-to-cell capability for Starlink 8-2 mission. SpaceX had originally planned to launch the mission on May 8 but postponed from that attempt. The Falcon 9's first stage came back to Earth about 8 minutes after launch as planned, touching down on the SpaceX drone ship. Boeing Starliner and its rocket ride, a United Launch Alliance Atlas V, rolled off the pad at Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on May 8, heading to an assembly building at the site so scientists can replace a misbehaving valve in the launcher's upper stage. SpaceX fires up Starship rocket for upcoming fifth test flight though, 
fourth test flight hasn't happened yet. SpaceX conducted a static fire with a Starship upper stage on May 8 at its Starbase site in South Texas, briefly igniting all six of the 165-foot-tall vehicle's Raptor engines while it remained anchored to the pad. SpaceX has already static-fired both of the elements, the upper stage known as SHIP, and its giant super-heavy first-stage booster for Test Flight 4. The Flight 4 vehicle is therefore presumably ready to go waiting for the launch license from FAA. China launched its first Long March 6C rocket, helping the nation further its goal of launching 100 orbital missions this year. The 131-foot-long March 6C rocket took off from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in China's mountainous Shanxi Province at 11.21 EDT on Monday, May 6. The two-stage, single-core Long March 6C is designed to launch small and medium-sized satellites to both low-Earth and Sun-synchronous orbits. Payload sizes vary depending on desired orbit, ranging from 6 to 10 tons. The rocket carried four satellites on its maiden voyage. Two of them are synthetic aperture radar satellites, while the other two are optical Earth observation platforms. Gargantuan Sunspot 15 Earths wide erupts with another colossal X-class solar flare. A colossal X-class solar flare observed on the morning of May 9, peaking at 5.13 a.m. EDT. Solar flares are eruptions from the sun's surface that emit intense bursts of electromagnetic radiation. They are categorized by size into lettered groups, with X-class being the most powerful. Then there are M-class flares that are 10 times less powerful than X-class flares, followed by C-class flares which are 10 times weaker than M-class flares, B-class are 10 times weaker than C-class flares and finally, A-class flares, which are 10 times weaker than B-class flares and have no noticeable consequences on Earth. Within each class, numbers from 1 to 10 describe a flare's relative strength. Sierra Space First Dream Chaser, Space Plane Ace's key tests and next stop will be Florida launch site. The private Dream Chaser space plane is closer to reaching the final frontier than ever before, with a completed checklist from its environmental testing phase and preparations underway to send it to Florida for final testing ahead of launch. Once Tenacity and Shooting Star arrive in Florida, they will head to KSC Space Station Processing Facility and undergo a final round of pre-launch tests. These trials will include acoustic testing, electromagnetic interference and compatibility testing, and final inspection and work on the space plane's thermal protection system. Increased solar activity has prompted the Space Weather Prediction Center, SWPC, to increase their vigilance heading into Mother's Day weekend. The SWPC has bumped up this weekend's geomagnetic storm watch to a level G4, the second highest on the scale. The change comes as solar activity continues at high levels and at least four coronal mass ejections, CMEs, propel towards Earth, FAA to conduct new environmental review for SpaceX Starship operations in Florida. SpaceX will have to clear another regulatory hurdle before ramping up work with its Starship mega rocket on Florida's space coast. SpaceX currently builds tests and launch the 400-foot-tall Starship, still in development at its Starbase site in South Texas. But SpaceX wants to add Florida to the mix as well. It aims to fly the giant vehicle from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, KSC, which already hosts liftoffs of SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. SpaceX now proposes to construct additional launch infrastructure not previously contemplated in the 2019 Environmental Assessment, launch an advanced design of the Starship and Super Heavy vehicle, operate at a projected higher launch tempo, and land the Super Heavy booster at LC-39A in support of the reusability concept. The revised plan envisions up to 44 Starship launches from LC-39A per year, FAA officials added in an emailed statement. NASA's Chandra spacecraft spots supermassive black hole erupting in the Milky Way's heart. Thank you for watching.